So uh, today I've got another In My Opinion video that I think a lot of you guys are probably very interested in hearing about. Um, and it's because it's a really good question that one of you guys submitted. So please keep sending me those questions, you know, put them in the comment section below this video. And if it's a great question, if it's one that I have time to get to, I'm certainly going to answer it. So please keep sending me those questions. Um, the more of those questions I get, the easier it is for me to find a really good one to talk about each week. So um, today's question comes from Rohit Haridis. And uh, Rohit asks, like I said, a question I think a lot of you guys are probably thinking right about now, especially if you watched my, um, my Programming and Access 2013 series, as well as the Advanced course. Um, and Rohit says, hey, Steve, I would consider myself to be a power user at this point, and I have developed an access database for my company. My question is that, is it possible to become a developer as a career with no formal training at the point where I am now. All my knowledge is from YouTube. So, uh, Rohit, um, first of all, I apologize if I've, you know, mispronounced your last name or your first name. I'm, I'm just terrible with foreign names. I'm, I'm, I'm an American and I, I fully admit that we are just uh, ignorant to most of the rest of the world. We just don't know how to pronounce these names. So I really, really apologize. But, um, I think your, your question really touches on something a lot of people who watch my channel are asking. And, you know, you guys have watched these videos. You've probably even watched other YouTube videos on Access, and you think that you've got a pretty good handle on how Access works. Uh, and you have may have built an app, a database or two, and, you know, you're starting to feel your, well, we, we say feel your oats, okay? In America, it's kind of slang for feeling good about what you what you know and what you what you think you, you can do. So um, now, first of all, let me address this question of, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Is it likely? I'm gonna say no, not at this point. And, and I say this with, a, you need to take this kind of with a grain of salt, okay? Um, because I personally, my personal experience is that, yeah, I mean, I, I had zero experience in access when I got the job, not my current position where I've, you know, I'm senior, uh, but, you know, getting accepted as doing the junior position of trying to, to work on the software. I actually had zero experience. I had no experience with my company. Now, for me, that was because I'd already spent three years working for this company. I already you know, had developed a relationship with the boss and, you know, with the people that I worked with that I was able to come to them and say, look, I would like to get into the development side of this instead of what my job was, which was tech support. I'd like to get more into the software stuff. And they were willing to take that chance on me. So they gave me some time to learn access and do it. And I am forever thankful to Gartman Technical Services. I, I mean, they're the guys. They, they really are this is a first class company to work for. Um, so is it possible? Absolutely, it's possible to make this a career. The chances of it happening though are very, very slim until you've got at least a few skills that you can put down on a resume. And I don't say this to be discouraging, okay? I don't say this to say, don't follow your dreams. You absolutely should. If this is something you really wanna do because you really enjoy it, by all means, pick up the mantle and do it, okay? But there's a few things that I think can really help you in trying to make this a career. Um, the first thing you have to understand is that YouTube alone is probably not going to do it, okay? Just learning from YouTube and making your own databases is really not going to give you the real world experience that you're going to need in order to fulfill the duties that you might be given uh, in some other job. So, there's, um, first of all, I would take and just sit down and start to build your resume. Put together on a resume, what are the skills that you know how to do, okay? And this is very important because what it will do is it will make you think about what you really do know, okay? What are the things that you really know how to do? And are there enough of them? Because a potential employer, you know, a potential employer is going to advertise that they have an open position. And they're going to advertise this to a lot of different places, and they're going to get a lot of resumes. And all those resumes are going to come in with skill sets, right? They're going to show predominantly what the skills of those applicants are. 
So you have to think about the, the, the depth of knowledge and skills and experience that's out there already that you are going to be competing against, okay? You have to really think about that. What are the people that you're gonna be competing against? What are their skills? What are their knowledge? And you're gonna see also on those applications or you know, on those job postings, what are the skill sets that you need in order to get the job? So you're gonna to have to sit down, look at your resume, compare that against what job requirements are, and you're gonna to start to realize, well, I don't have that, I don't have that, and I don't have that, but I do have that. Now, if you submit your resume and you've only got a few qualifications to what they're asking for, chances are you're not going to even get a call back, okay? You're not gonna get a phone call because they're gonna have a bunch of applicants that do meet all of the requirements that are posted. But keep doing it, you know, send your resume out. You just never know. Somebody might be willing to call you back and talk to you about the skills that you know. And you might be able to convince them that you do know enough and get an interview and, and see where, what happens from there. So never, never stop sending out your resume if it's what you really wanna do. And try your best that every time you get turned down from a, a position, Find out, don't, you know, don't try to convince them otherwise. Don't try to change their minds about things, but find out what was it that I was missing, okay? What, what do I need to know for you guys to have hired me? What, what are the skills that I need to learn in order for you guys to, to take that next step and would be willing to, to offer me the job? If you can find out that information, try to get some feedback from whoever it is that's, that's doing the filtering and see what it is. Uh, that you're missing and on your resume, and then go out there and fulfill that requirement. Go out and learn those skills, go out and learn those things. Because once you do, then you will be able to have a better resume. You'll be able to put more skills down on that resume and you're gonna make it look better and you're gonna start to, to, to be one of those other people that has the required skills that, um, that every company is looking for and they're gonna be willing, much more willing to give you a call back in an interview. So that would be my first step is set down, get that resume, put it together, you know, really think about what are the skills that you really, really know and you know, put it down. And chances are, if you put somewhere on there that you learned it from YouTube, it's probably not gonna go over really well. So maybe not mention that you've learned it from YouTube, but there are some certified websites, thing, you know, places where you can go to get like a certificate that says you learned something. Um, you know, places like Pluralsight is a really good place to go and they have some access videos there. Uh, but you know, something that, that kind of documents that you know these things. Uh, that's, that's really good to do if you can. So put all those skills down in a resume, send it out, you know, find some job postings, send out that resume, try to get some feedback. If you don't get the job, don't be disappointed. Take that up as an opportunity to learn more about what you need to know. And then once you know those things, go out and, or, you know, once you know what you need to know, <laughs> go out and learn those things so that you can add them to the resume, okay? Now, until you get that job posting, you know, until you get that job position working for whoever and making it a career, um, what I would do in the meantime is, aside from learning all those other skills, go to places that are, you know, that are full of people who are looking for help on their own databases. Things like forums, okay? Access forums are great. Um, even the comments section of my YouTube channel. I, I welcome all of you guys to respond to each other. If someone asks a question, chances are, I don't really have a lot of time. I, you know, I, I work a full-time job. I have a family and everything. I don't necessarily have the capability to answer everybody's questions, especially when they have a database that they need help on. I can't, I, I'm kind of limited in what I can do. I can't necessarily take someone else's database and start working on it unless it's for my job. So that gives you guys who are looking to get a job or get experience, that gives you guys the opportunity to say, hey, look, I'll help you out, okay? I, I'll help you out on this access forum or on Steve's comments and, you know, let me, send me your database. I'll take a look at it and I'll see what I can do, what I can figure out. And then from there, you guys are exchanging ideas, you're exchanging concepts and you're able to look at what someone else is doing. And when you look at someone else's work, okay? This is, this is really an important point. 
if you've only built your own application from the scratch and you started to build something you know internally for your company or for yourself or whatever you really don't have the real world experience that you need and it hasn't opened you up to the other ways of doing things or the other you know it, it hasn't shown you outside of your box of what you've understood um by getting these other databases together by by looking at someone else's work and saying okay i see what they're doing I could probably make it better if I did it this way. Um, and just trying to understand how someone was putting something together. How were they, what were they thinking? And being able to even ask them the question, what were you trying to do with this table? What were you trying to do with this query? What were you trying to do with this VBA code? By asking them those questions and learning from them what they were trying to do, you start to understand conceptually how potentially other clients will want things to be done and how they're putting things together themselves. And that experience is invaluable. Being able to understand what type of questions do I need to ask? What are the different ways that something can be done? Because you'll find that you may have been doing it wrong. Maybe whosoever database you're working on, you find something in there, you discover something that's like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that it could be done this way. And that makes so much more sense. That's faster, that's better, that's easier, that's simpler. So taking those databases from someone else, working on them, fixing them, making them better, improving upon them, sending your feedback to those people um, is invaluable. You know, maybe, you know, those relationships also can lead to something. Perhaps, um, you know, that's somebody that's asking me a question, works for a company, and they're looking for someone to maybe help them out full time. You know, so maybe that could turn into a job for you somewhere down the road. Those type of relationships and working on those different databases, that is the invaluable experience that will get you to the point where you don't just understand from a, you know, a knowledge perspective, you don't just understand the concepts, but you have real world wisdom, okay? And I read somewhere, I can't remember exactly if it's five years or seven years, but at least five years, it takes at least five years to really have real world wisdom of how to do your craft, okay? You really need to spend the time working on something for a long, long time and, and, and doing all this experience of trying to, to figure out all these different problems and learning all the different ways to solve those problems. It just takes time for you to finally gain all of the wisdom that you need to really have the skill set to handle every situation that gets thrown at you. So that would be my recommendation. First, put together your resume, sit down, really think about what are the skills that you do know, you know, send out the res those resumes to all those different, you know, job postings that you can, see if you can get a hit, but even if you don't, try to get some feedback from them. What are the things that you need to learn and go learn them. Then while you're doing all of that, you know, go out and try to get some certifications if you can, but on top of that, help each other out. Look at other people's databases, try to fix things. Go to, go to access forums, or even, you know, if you're in .NET, go to the .NET forums, try to solve people's problems, go learn from them. You know, go to Stack Overflow and, you know, look at the questions that are being asked and try to see if you can solve them. Um, that's a great way to go learn and get some experience on what it is that you're do, uh, you know, that you need to do or need to learn, really understand and have the wisdom of your craft. So that would be my advice. That's you know just YouTube and building your own applications is probably not enough to get you a job. But if you do those other things on top of that, uh, I think you're going to start to build the, at least the skill set that's going to be required. Now it's going to be hard. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be very hard to break through because a lot of people that you're gonna be going against have a four-year degree or a college degree of some sorts that certifies that they know these things, that they know these skills and they know how to do it. Um, so just be aware that you know it's gonna be a tough market, but that doesn't mean you can't get it. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities out there to, you know, people say you know, a lot of the jobs post that, you know, um, I, I need a, a degree or, you know, the the equivalent in experience. So you have to get the experience. Uh, and this is probably the best way I know of how to do it, okay? So anyway, 
I hope that answers your question, Rohit. I hope that um, a lot of you guys, I'm sure, will have some follow-up questions. Again, please, if you have those follow-up questions, post them in the comment section below this video, uh, and I will be happy to answer them if I can. So anyway, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for watching this video. And until I see you guys at the next one, uh, thanks for watching. All right, bye-bye.